Happy New Year, No DQ Galaxy, and here we are with the No DQ Review. Thank you, Aaron Rift. I love that name. I want to introduce everybody. We got a lot to talk about today, so I'm going to start with the man in charge, Mr. Aaron Rift. How you doing? I am doing excellent. I'm having a great time so far here in 2018, and I'm very much looking forward to today's No DQ Review. We'll be talking about Raw, SmackDown, pay-per-view news, and of course, the latest happenings in the world of wrestling. Yes, and as always, I like to transition over to Jexy. Jexy rocks. How are you doing? I'm good. Living the sub-degree temperature life. You know, the American dream. It's That's why I got my hat on. And yes, my, my uh, condo is heated, but it's going to be like negative 20 wind chill. Wow. Cool, cool. And last but not least, his phone always blows up even when we're recording because he's the man, Big Vito LaGrasso. How's it going? Pop variety of hot shots to the body with the no DQ review. We're getting live, baby, live. Everybody's in the house. Everybody's freezing their ass off. We all got nothing to do. That's why we're watching crappy shows on TV. So let's start off the new year with a bang. Go ahead, my man. Lead us off. And that is a hell of a nice T-shirt you got on. A hell of a nice T-shirt. I love the Knicks cap. Okay. Jackson has sub-degree temperatures doing nothing. Where are you living at? Ohio. I, 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 it's terrible. It's terrible. How could you live in Ohio? There's nothing there. And Aaron, where are you at? I'm in Portland, Oregon. I'm in hipster territory. Oh yeah. Portland, Oregon. A lot of trees, a lot of grass, a lot of corn. Living with the Amish. I can get out of here. Let's go start the show. Well, nothing can be colder than ratings for Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live. I mean, let's be honest. Actually, no. I'm going to... Well, in general, though, how wrestling used to be, Aaron, I don't care if it's up a little bit. It, they're bad. They're not what they used to be. And, let, I mean, let's talk why. Like, is there anything, Aaron, I'll start with you. I know you actually do your No DQ live shows. Was there anything on Raw that you thought maybe if they do more of that type of thing, it would be interesting going forward? Or was it all blah? I did like the Samoa Joe Roman Reigns match. I I thought that that was a very good match, but everything else was pretty much a blur for me. Here we are two days later, and I I have forgotten most of what happened on Raw. But I do want to say the ratings were up a little bit this week. I think they did like 2.8 million against two football games, which is not bad, actually, for New Year's Day. However, they should be doing better. They could be doing better, no doubt about it. Um, I thought Raw was a decent show. I thought SmackDown was all right. Just more the same. I'm not really feeling the Royal Rumble that much at this point, but maybe I'm in the minority. I don't know. What do you guys think? Virtue, what do you think? (laughs) Well, I mean, I know it's a lot of rehash for you. Um, Raw was absolutely boring to me, with the exception of a couple things, and we'll transition to that. I'm a big Roman Reigns guy, and him, you know, he brought Samoa Joe. Look, Samoa Joe, Ring of Honor, TNA, we get it. He's a great wrestler, but Vito. Did Roman Reigns not bring Samoa Joe up to his level on Monday Night Raw? I think that him just being on the same planet as Roman Reigns elevates him because, like I said, it. I said this on a bunch of different podcasts, guys. Samoa Joe doesn't have the it factor. He is a card filler. He is a mid-card filler, a guy you put in with somebody who's the top guy to make the guy look good. He's a tough opponent. He's an aggressive wrestler. But if you had to put a title on him in the WWE or you had to do that to get him over the top, he just doesn't have the effect. He does cut a good promo. His in work, his in ring work is OK. It's tough. His body is what it is. But when you talk about TNA and then you talk about WWE, you know, when you talk about Ring of Honor, you talk about WWE. I'll even put it like this. When you talk about WWE, then you put ECW, then you put Ring of Honor, then you put TNA. I mean, that's the way the ball bounces. And I I just look at it like that. And he just does not have the it factor. He would be good in a group. He would be good as part of a team. I think if they put something with him. But as far as him being a single and carrying something, you see where it's going. He lost to Brock. He lost to Strowman. He'll lose to Kane. He lost to Finn Balor. He's over here with Roman Reigns again. He's got the undefeated streak due to DQs or whatever, attacking Reigns. But you have to beat up somebody. But when you get to the main match, guys, and when it comes down to winning and losing, 
He's been losing. He's not, he doesn't have that it factor, and he couldn't even beat the Miz. And the Miz is my man. I love the Miz. And you know, you look at Miz, and everybody says, ah, he's he's uh, he's not aggressive. He's a puss. He's this. He's that. Is the other thing. But he's a winner. He's talent. He's the A team. He's the A plus. And if you put Samoa Joe with Cena, I mean, oh, Aaron, Aaron raises his hand. Go ahead, Aaron. Well. Um, the Miz was actually voted by Rolling Stone as the superstar of the year. So what were your thoughts on that? My thoughts, I thought it was great. They couldn't have picked a better guy. He went out for a whole year and carried a title. He had the brand, he did the Cena angle, which was phenomenal, right? He took that title and made it something. Every segment, it was a can't miss segment because you wanted to see the Miz. You wanted to see what he was going to do. He elevated two guys and he put a, two guys with him who were his who were his wingmen. Okay, he mm -hmm. made the TV interesting, something you wanted to watch. And then if you brought Jericho back and Miz is champion, what's to say you couldn't have a debate where Miz and, and Jericho get into it again? It would be interesting. The Miz is a prime time player. He accomplished that. I think the Miz is going to do great things. Congratulations to him for winning Rolling Stone Wrestling of the Year. Roman Reigns had an up and down year. You know what I mean? He was there. He wasn't there. He was going. He wasn't going. He went with the Shield. He's out of the Shield. He won the title, and now he's on this level waiting to get to Brock Lesnar, which we don't know when it's going to happen. Aaron, who won that last year? Was it AJ Styles? What the Rolling I don't, Stone? I, yeah, like, do they pick a wrestler every year, a superstar oh, of the year? I, I, I don't remember. Yeah, this I, I year, was looking on Google trying to see who it was, but I mean, I thought you know, Miz was kind of a shock, but it was a pleasant surprise because you would think that you know, a magazine like that would pick like Roman Reigns or John Cena or somebody like that. Jexy, what are your thoughts? Do you think the Miz was the right choice for that? Um, do you think it's an honest pick, or is there just a Miz fan working at Rolling Stone? <laughs> No, I think he definitely deserved it. He was the best pick, you know, like he himself turned into an absolute rock star this year, you know, from being the it couple with Maurice, everything that they did was exciting. It was fresh. It was entertaining. He brought himself to a new level as far as his character goes. Their ring gear was always on point. Like I loved seeing what they would come up with at each different show. Um, I was always thoroughly entertained this entire year by Miz. Absolutely. I mean, he's like the best promo in the company. I did a poll on NoDQ.com who cuts the best promo in WWE. The Miz won it by a landslide, like way ahead of Paul Heyman, who was a distant second. Uh, the Miz is definitely, I think, no questions about it, uh, the best talker in the company right now. Um, Jex, I want to ask you about Samoa Joe. Um, do you agree with Vito or do you feel like he should be in a bigger position in WWE right now? And what are your thoughts on his physique? Because I know Vito has his opinion about Joe's look. What do you think about it? I mean, I like Joe as a wrestler because he is a very solid technical uh, wrestler. His appearance doesn't really bother me personally because I feel like his character, it fits. Um, you know, we're used to seeing bigger the bigger Samoan guys. You have Rikishi, who is another one. Um, but if he is a hardcore heel and continues the road that he's going down, I could see him elevating a little bit higher but he as of right now is more of like a fill-in guy that's right. not wrong i look at that that way too yeah and i actually don't mind sumo joe's physique because he he doesn't he's not ashamed of it you know he shows it somebody like kevin owens who definitely is not in the best shape he veto he's in ring shape right he doesn't get blown up he's right. he's but, in like, ring shape. but he wears the clothes the t-shirts to cover up and that screams like uh you know indie, indie wrestler but you know at least joe's not ashamed of who he is you know so I, I what do you guys think of that promo joe cut in front of renee young uh basically bashing dean ambrose I, like jexy i'll start with you that was interesting i thought that was interesting i want to see more of that i do i do that's exactly what i want to see from him you know where you're kind of like is he really talking crap for real but it just it that kind of like just grading in a way, you know, where you're just like making it personal and the way that she reacted to it as well just made it even better because she just had that kind of like, all right, fuck you kind of thing too back at him when he was talking about Dean. Vito, were you, did you like that spot? I thought it was great, but the thing for me is 
I would like to see him continue to berate her where she actually gives the slap in the face and then somebody come and take up for her, one of Dean's boys. Maybe it won't have to be Roman Reigns. Maybe it won't have to be Rollins. But I'd like to see somebody else, one of one of his secret buddies, somebody yeah. you wouldn't expect. Once the slap goes down, you know something, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take you and I'm gonna hit you, and then all of a sudden, crack somebody comes out of left field and drills him. There's a brand new feud. What happens if a Bray Wyatt comes out of nowhere and all of a sudden knocks him out? That could that be the new sister Abigail? Well, you know what I like with that? That would be something good if Joe like does that a lot while Ambrose is hurt. And even if it takes eight, nine months for Ambrose to come back, that could be an interesting spot for Ambrose to come back for revenge because of how Joe is treating him, Renee. I don't know. I like to see more. Did you just say you know? eight, nine months for an angle here with the WWE? Slow, just slow. Just, you yeah, know, maybe once happen. a well, I know, but I'm just saying, though, in the days when you had a Russo writing it, you could literally have stuff like that. Just, you know, not even main stuff, just little nuances here and there and have it be paid off at some point down the road. But today, you're right. They don't they don't know how to all do right, that. Now go on your little paper and put an X mark for bad, you know, because we all give each other goals of get your pen, paper, give it an X mark. Bad Aroni- for what? Bad now. No. Bad. Erroneous. Uh, we're going to see in the comments. Uh, erroneous. Erroneous. Yeah, erroneous. We're going to see in the comments, but... You know, here I want to segue to this. Like, I, I didn't put this as a topic we were going to talk about, but when I hear bad, what what are everybody's thoughts on Elias? Like, when when I see Elias, this guy is a guy that can that sits in the middle of the ring with the guitar. The same thing The Rock did later on in his career. Yep. But he can turn a crowd. You know, they might want to cheer him, but he can do something to get him to boo. And if that's singing horribly. Whatever it is, pausing when he he does a song that maybe sounds catching and he stops. Aaron, what's your thoughts on Elias? Because I think they could really build this guy. I think he has that it factor to control so a live crowd. You think he could? But they're be not a, seeing. You it. think he could be a bigger star than Samoa Joe? Is what you're saying? I absolutely do. I think See, he could be a top heel, a, a top heel guy. I, I think it's a novelty. I think a year from now he'll be down in the lower card again. I don't because think of WWE happen. booking. You're overlooking this guy's talent because of WWE's booking. In I think my he's crap. entertaining. I think he's entertaining, but I have to say, this and look, you're an Raw, Aiden English guy, so you're not well, going to put Elias I, up on I a pedestal. Liked, I liked the thing I liked the most about that segment this week. I liked Bo Dallas doing his with the combo deal. with the cowbell i had a but fever see, and the only i get you more and, and that's cool and 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 axel's horrible singing but that doesn't come together without elias with the spotlight on him to start that segment and you got it Vito. what do you think on that i am so disappointed that they dropped the ball on this guy he falls in the same class as bray wyatt and i think Elias could be U.S. champion, intercontinental champion. I think he could hold it and hold it strong. That's the kind of heel he Do you guys think you would compare him, his persona, to a Rick Rude? I, got I that, think I agree. He's got that cocky look, arrogant, doesn't have to do much. He just shows up. He's an instant heat magnet. But... The way they book him and the way they handled him, they dropped the ball on him with the Jason Jordan. They gave him the ups with the Roman Reigns. They dropped him with Braun Strowman. And where is he? It's just the same thing like Bray Wyatt, guys. Bray Wyatt had the greatest gimmick, the greatest entourage. You know, when he came out singing, it's, uh, you know, um, with the kids and everything, you got the whole world in your hands. He's got the cigarette. He's got the lights. He's got it all. But they don't push him to the stars, and he could be the number one guy. Yep. And they dropped the ball. I, <laughs> and, his, and his catchphrase, walk with Elias, spells out WWE. So, like, I, I'm old school, Vito, and I like to see, like, long-term heels. But it, at some point, they, you know, the fans get behind him and they get that baby face run. You know, whether it's to sell merch or just have character development. Do you see Elias as, as a big enough star, Jexy, where he could be a great heel and it's some, someday a baby face? I, I don't know what it is. And I hope people are on my side in the comments because Aaron doesn't see it. I mean, Jexy, thoughts on Elias? I do. I agree. I think Vito said it best. Um, They have booked him like crap. He gets to a point where he's got a lot of people behind him, the crowd's behind him. Then they put him in a matchup, and he just gets dominated. They don't put him 
you know, in a place where he, he can continue to keep growing with that. I love the walk with Elias, the walking with Elias. I think that's tremendous. Um, but until they decide to start taking him more seriously, I think he's just going to kind of stay in the middle. But he does. He definitely has <laughs> potential. You know what it is, guys? They don't give longevity to the creative side of the characters to let them develop. And we discussed this a few shows ago. There's no longevity to the creative side to let these guys run with their character. He had a great character. He's got a great look. He's got a great physique. He's got a good he's a good ring heel. And like you said, can he develop into a baby face? 150% yes. Yep, because you know Vince is always about how can you make me money. So when I look at a star, I look at every can they play every role, and I think Elias could could you know, and that's not just because I've seen him at indie shows as Logan Shulo, but you know, and, and let's transition from that. I, I want to talk a little bit about SmackDown too, and and there was something that happened on both shows this week that really bothered me, and I know it's bothered other people out there. So on Raw, you had out of the blue, unadvertised as far as I could tell. You had Asuka face the champion in a non-title match, Alexa Bliss, and beat her, beat the champion. On SmackDown, for the second week in a row, you had Sami Zayn, I believe it was Kevin Owens last week, in non-title matches go against AJ Styles. Correct? Uh, so much has happened, Aaron, that happened. And in every one of those matches, the champion lost in a non-title match. That drives a lot of people nuts. It really drives me nuts. So, Aaron, what are your thoughts on that? Because, to me, it really diminishes the title, let alone the champion holding it. Um, well, as far as the SmackDown match goes, I mean, that was just building up the match for the Royal Rumble. I thought that that was okay, and AJ Styles lost because of all the outside shenanigans. I thought that was fine. I did have a bigger issue with Raw. I, I thought it was weird to have that match, first of all, take place on Raw, and then for Asuka to just a just beat Alexa Bliss like she's nothing. Nothing. Alexa Bliss has basically been the top star on Raw for the past year. And what, is, was it, what does it say about the rest of the women when uh, Asuka beats the, the champion that easily when Alexa's been the top star over the past year? So I thought it just not only diminished the title, but diminished the entire division that Asuka was able to just beat her like she was nothing. So that, that was my take on it, at least. Yeah, and I get your point where you in an AJ Styles scenario where it built that match for Royal Rumble, but that's still nonsense. You know, they could have worked a tag match or something where AJ had a partner versus him and Sami Zayn, you know, Owens and Zayn for where it wasn't a non title match. I just think that's ridiculous. Jexy, does any of those outrage you more than any of the others that just happened? Uh, Asuka and Alexa, it really did. You know, and for me personally, you guys know I love the thought of Asuka and Alexa. But I don't think that match should have happened right now, not at all. I don't feel like they built it. And, you know, to me, when that happened, even though I've been looking forward to that so long, I felt like, do you guys remember the commercial at Christmas time where the kid was in the store with his mom and he wanted to buy his dad a present and he got him a craftsman tool set? Yes. The dad didn't even have the present opened yet. And he's like, oh, it's a craftsman tool set. Like, you have no resist to resist the urge, to resist the temptation to just give it away. Build up to it. There was no build to that whatsoever. And, like, me, I could think of 20 different ways that they could have gone about it. They could have had an interference. I feel like the match should have ended in interference. Oscar should not have won. And Alexa should not have won. Either, yeah. either way, they could play it up where Absolution came out and interfered. They could have done something in the back where Asuka was fighting somebody else and Alexa's just standing there watching the camera, watching the match. She turns, she doesn't say a word, she just walks away. You reminded me of something, Jaxie. I had to interrupt you there. What did okay. they do, do with Absolution and Asuka angle? Two weeks in a row, remember? And that did that just drop out of thin air, like yeah. just vanish? Just like Natalia, you know, she did that whole retirement oh. speech, and then, you know, there was no follow up to it. And okay, that's ahead, something Jesse. to put about too. You have Alexa, you know, and they just show her walk up to Absolution in the locker room, and it looks like maybe she gives Paige money or something, you know, like buys her off to go out and interfere to do something or. Alexa's in the middle of a match and Asuka walks out and just stands there. 
distracts Alexa and Alexa loses. Like, build that. There was no reason to just get it done and over with because it hurt Alexa and it hurt Asuka. I feel now, if, if, if people don't think that you can build matches anymore because there's no pay-per-views, that's erroneous, Vito, and I want to ask you on this. You have the next week's Raw that you can build stuff for to try to increase ratings. You have the WWE Network you can get people to subscribe to to build. So what is this like? Vito, take it, man. I'm going to go nuts. I'm going to go off camera. All right, here. guys. Here, here's how you look at it, right? <laughs> now, what is wrong with the champion going out there ready for a match, her making her way halfway up the aisle looking at her? I'm not wrestling you today. I'm the champ. And walk back to the dressing room. Right now, you got nobody winner or loser. You got to, okay, there's something brewing. You have this segment, like Jexy said, where they was paying money. Everybody expected um, the three girls to come out and do something. Not yet. It's not time yet. When you do an angle with the champion and a challenger, okay, it's usually the champion dropping the challenger. And then when the championship match comes, the challenger usually goes over. This time, they're doing it reverse psychology where the champion is getting dropped and dropped and she has nobody there and dropped. And now it looks like the momentum is for Asuka, but they're not going to give Asuka everything. They're going to make her lose her first match. It's going to come via a interference and she's going to lose. Alexa's going to roll out. They put, um, what's her name, Nia Jack out of the mix. So this way she can go tend to Enzo so she didn't have to rely on Nia Jack. Okay. Possibly setting up something where Alexa is butthurt that Nia didn't come to her rescue. The evolution came and saved her. And who do we find in bed with Enzo? We find Alexa Bliss. So there could that, be something. Uh, that, that would be fantastic. Vito, wow. Hold on. Hold your phone. Check your messages. Did, wow. I, 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 I cannot believe I did not see that. You got Nia and Enzo angle, buddies with Ale you know, Nia and Alexa. That's fantastic. Elaborate if you want to. So, guys, when everybody's here, like everybody's looking for something to happen, they're giving you all this indigestion and all these interruptions from what getting the main point. Oscar is not going to stay undefeated. She is going to lose probably at the Royal Rumble. Okay. You have a couple of storylines developing. You have Alexa, who's been a coward heel the whole time until she gets the upper hand. And then she is one of the best ass kicking heels in the company and the most dominant heel wrestler female that they have. Yeah. I'm not comparing her to Charlotte Flair because when Charlotte is on top of her game as a heel, she is dominant, but not as dominant as nasty as Alexa Bliss because she's smaller. She has to be devious. She has different facials. Um, Charlotte Flair has different athletic gifts to overpower you and do things with. But when you see this, you know, let Asuka do her thing because, you know, I think she's boring. She's in the Nakamura class. I told you guys this. Has, did she impress shame me? Shame no. on you, Vito. Shame no, on no, you. Shame on me. You know why? Because she was exposed from day one with Emma, day two with Emma. They fired Emma because she didn't make her look good. If everybody forgot that. And then they had her roll through all the other girls just to get to this point. For what? For Oscar to lose instead of building her up as a wrecking machine till the big one then have the interference. That oh. is my take. We heard it here on on the on our No DQ panel. WWE, I know you listen. I know some of the things you do take. You write it down on your little pad, and you steal it. Go ahead and steal this one because I called it here live, baby, live. Go ahead. You know, Vito, if, if so, the Nia Jackson Enzo relationship ends up with Enzo sleeping with Alexa – could Nia be put, you know, you look at her with her body type and you think a monster heel. Could that, could she be a top baby face monster go, be with sympathy on an angle like that? Absolutely. You know what I mean? why, absolutely. Why not? You know, Enzo's a certified G and being yeah. a certified G like myself, what do you do? <laughs> you G up all the ladies, don't matter what they look like, right? No matter what shape, 
what size, what creed, their color. You know, they're like a credit card. You know, everyone's served. One like McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? You, you taste all 32 flavors in Baskin Robbins. We're asking for another 35, 32 because you're certified. You're the G man. So join the list, Nia Jack. But when you get butt hurt, boy, are you going to be a B I T C H? And are you going to cry loud? And are you going to slap the shit out of everybody in the ring? You're going to slap the shit out of Vince, too. How could yeah. you let this happen, Vince? You son of a bitch. Don't that's you know great. I've got it going on? Yep. And that's what's missing in wrestling. Great storylines that intertwine with one another. And like, like let, let's look at that. At least there's something going on there with the relationship of, of Nia Jax and Enzo and then how that's affecting Alexa and Nia's relationship. But look on SmackDown. What what is there any storyline with the women? Charlotte's the champion and that's it. Aaron, is SmackDown's women division just like blah or is it just me? It's just the same thing every week. They do the six women tag team matches. There's not really any kind of storyline going oh, on. Oh, Becky came back. Yeah, Ooh. she did come back. She did come <laughs> back on SmackDown Live this week. But it was expected, you know, with her, her movie finishing up. Yeah, Jax, any thoughts on the SmackDown women's division? I mean, I, I think it's just totally boring right now. It is. I would like to see them develop, well, not develop Naomi because she's already developed, but do something with her and start pushing her a little bit more. I'd like to see her kind of get dirty. That, that's a good point. I mean, she had that baby face run as the glow with the belt that glowed and everything. Vito, you got you watch SmackDown, Vito, or are you busy uh, doing your I, Facebook lives on Tuesday night? I, I, I don't know. Do you watch? I, ca I catch it. You know, I'm a busy guy. I catch some stuff, but I did yeah. catch the women's stuff. And I'm going to give you my take on it, right? We said this a few weeks ago when the, these three young ladies came on. They were inexperienced. They didn't look. They didn't look like killer. They didn't look like women wrestlers. They looked like three young ladies Riot getting squad. in the ring. Yeah. Okay. Now they've been exposed. You saw that. You saw that inexperienced. They're not dominating. Okay. So where do you go with all these different faces? You have Lana who's inexperienced, but she's good on the mic. She's out of place. You have uh, Tamina, who's a bodyguard, who has her specialty. Naomi is a good single wrestler. Becky Lynch is a good singles wrestler. You have Carmella with the money in the bank that they still haven't done nothing. You have Charlotte Flair, the champion, okay? You have all these individual wrestlers, but they're not going in any direction. They're just kind of like, you know, mixing and moshing and bumping playing bumper cars with each other nobody's being dominant not even charlotte flair okay natalia is being a little devious but you the whole mix of them is completely like gone there's nobody who stands out what would happen was now if you took a group of them and you said you know what we're going to take ourselves over to raw and we're going to invade invade raw before the royal rumble now, now, I'm not talking about a whole locker room scene. I'm talking about them showing up in dresses, business suits, approaching them girls in the ring, coming in a segment. We'd like to challenge you. And now you got something going on. But to have them fight and do all the stuff they're outside, they've overexposed their, their, um, their rookiness. And they, they showed off their experience as wrestlers because they don't know how to punch. They don't know how to kick. Who's laughing? You see the punches. You see the kicks. It's not believable. Who Now, I'm going to ask the three of you guys a question. Who out of all those people on the outside is the one person you believe that's a kick-ass woman? Jexy, I'll start with you. Who is the kick-ass woman when you see that mixed mosh outside? I like Becky Lynch besides Charlotte, I, of I course. I agree. I like Becky. Yeah, that's the now, easy answer. But That's uh, an easy answer, but... Why won't they give her the push to get over the top if she's the most believable female we got? I'd like to see her as a heel. I mean, she's been pretty much been a babyface on the main roster the whole time. I'd like to see her, like, snap and turn on Charlotte. That's just a little bit of creativity, you know, set up new feuds, have, have somebody. Could you imagine SmackDown ending with Becky snapping, turning on Charlotte, beating her down, and looking into the, the TV camera and... We don't get that anymore. Like uh, Now, you just said something good here, right? You want to come creative. What's to say Becky Lynch takes these three young girls under the, her wing? Now you got to force them. Now you have some direction. And if they're not overexposed, all I want you three girls to do is kick the hell out of whoever I say to. I don't want you to do no wrestling moves. 
I don't want you to do no off the ropes. I don't want you to do no punch, kick. I just want you to pummel. Yep. Hold them up. Let me get the finish. Act like a gang. Now you got some. The got lynch a- mob. Vito, the, li- the lynch mob. That's it. That's, you know, that's exactly what it is. Like a female version of the NWO. There you go, yeah. guys. You know, Becky and Lynch wanted it. Yeah, you know, and I just wanted to make sure we covered both sides since we were talking about the Alexa Bliss and Asuka match. Um, let's move over to this. And, you know, I, I am just baffled with this storyline. And I'm going to start with you, Aaron. Okay. Um, is Jason Jordan working out? Did Maybe did it not happen the way Vince McMahon and the crew wanted and they've just settled with? What are your thoughts in, in general, especially with Ambrose being out and Jason yeah. now tag team champion? Like, I thought Rollins kind of was heelish this week again, but I thought Jordan, I don't know. Take it, man. Like, like a few weeks ago, it felt like Jordan was becoming more of a whiny heel, and that was the direction. But now that Ambrose yeah. is hurt, it feels like WWE's maybe backing off on that a little bit. So I'm not really sure where this is going to go. Um, you know, Kurt Angle said in an interview that it's working because Jordan is basically Kurt Angle's character from 1999 and, and WWE has this all planned out and that's what Kurt Angle is claiming at least. So I don't, I don't know what the deal is, um, but he is getting booed. I mean, I was at, at no mercy a couple months ago and the place was booing really loud when he came out, they were making a lot of noise. People were not sitting down in their seats. They were standing, they were booing, but they were making noise and they were invested in what was going on. So, I mean, there, there's definitely two sides. You can look at it. Um, I don't know if it's working or not. I'm, I'm pretty confused by the whole thing personally. When I see Jason Jordan, I feel like they're forcing like the, the young Cena when he first came up with ruthless aggression. And, you know, it turned into the rap gimmick, which got which drew great heat. But, like, I, I just – it's like they want to create because it's like Roman really didn't fully get to that – where the, the Cena level and, and maybe Vince McMahon's eyes. But I like where Roman's at because it's a whole different beast with how everybody likes him, yet he still has his supporters. But I think that they're always trying to make the next Hulk Hogan, John Cena. Yeah. And, I, and Vito, do you think they're looking – and I know I'm going way – I'm reaching on this because Jason Jordan's probably still green to a point. But do you think somebody in the back is looking at Jason Jordan throwing this – Throwing them out there with this, thinking, let's see if we get the next John Cena. They're looking at his body. They're looking at his look. They're looking at his smile. His <laughs> promos are horrible. His in-ring ability, he could be a good technician. He does some good things, but he doesn't have that charisma. He's got that, ah, and then he's going to do stuff. He doesn't have that, you know, grit or that assertion. That's what he's missing. They put him with uh, Rollins to give him some kind of credibility. But like you said, Rollins looked like he was going to turn heel. Now, what's to say Rollins doesn't he gets fed up, turns on this kid, beats the hell out of him, and this gives us what we all wanted, Rollins to turn heel again. He's not with the shield. He's not turning on the shield. He's turning on this kid because even Roman Reigns was like, Really, kid? You just got here, and you're going to get my back? Um, Why don't you go back to your daddy and go, you know, have some chocolate milk? You know what I mean? But you could see it happening. That's what's going to happen. Rollins' heel turn is going to come against Jason Jordan. If Rollins turns against Jason Jordan, the crowd's just going to cheer for Rollins anyways. They're going to boo Jordan even if that happens. They'll say, thank you, Rollins, you know? Yeah, but that's what you want because, you, like you said, there's no creativity. There's nothing for us to believe in. And what is Rollins' best... um, Virtue, <laughs> being a heel. I admit, Rollins sucks as a baby oh, face. Jexy, I agree. Jexy, um, what's your thoughts on Jason Jordan? Is this going to mesh well with Roman and Seth while Ambrose is recovering? And what's the what do you what do you see coming out of all of this? You know, is, is maybe Kurt going to be in on it all along to get his son, or like Vito has said in the past, is this not going to be? Is is Jason Jordan going to come out and say I, he's not really my dad? I just wanted to get a spot. I know that's a lot, but take it away. Um, I feel kind of a mix of what uh, Vito and Aaron said. Uh, when I look at it, he, Vito's right. They had to put someone in Ambrose's spot. They were running as the tag team. He got hurt. When something like that unexpected happens, you have to make a change on the fly. Jordan was kind of in between, not really doing anything. Um, and he's got that whiny, like, just annoying daddy's boy thing about him, spoiled brat. Um, so 
plugging him into that spot, I think makes sense. It's, I feel like it's going to be short lived. Um, but at the same time, like Vito said, that gives him a chance to kind of redeem himself by putting him with Rollins because he is a stronger star. Uh, but I think maybe Jordan might turn on Rollins to try to go full heel because like Aaron said, they're going to cheer Rollins over Jordan. The way I look at it is it would end yeah. up making Rollins a face if, jo- if Jordan does go that way. Okay. But I could see that happening. I could see him just grabbing him and suplexing him in the ring and, oh, you know, you think I'm a daddy's boy, what now? And then those two go have a singles run because we all obviously all know Ambrose is going to be out for an indefinite point of time. Yeah. And he, to be honest with you, I, I, I hate injuries, Vito, and you'll agree with this because it takes money out of their pocket. But sometimes it's the best thing in wrestling because not all the time, but when you come back rejuvenated, refreshed, maybe develop a new plan to get a character over Ambrose. Need what like for when Ambrose comes back and we're going to, you know, it's going to be a while from now. Um, how do you think that it should be handled? Uh, Vito, I'm going to start with you. This is a topic I did not mean to discuss, but it no, came up. Okay. Thank you, Jaxi. Um, Ambrose needs refreshed. So is this injury a good thing for him? And I hate saying that, but go ahead. Ambrose can come back refreshed because I think he's been a little played out and that crazy Roddy Piper, you know. That I wouldn't even give him that. Yeah, not, not even not close. Like very watered down. Yeah. yeah, it is. You're right, guys. As in, you know, did he need a break? Yeah. Did he need to take off? Did he need to come back with something different? Yeah. You might see him come <laughs> back. You might see him come back with a shaved head. You might see him come back with a new outfit. You might see him come back in a different persona, right? So, I mean, it's a good thing. But here's another thing that we were talking about. Like you guys just said, what could we do with Samoa Joe with his angle with his wife, right? Now, I'm alerting the WWE creative to be creative and steal our ideas here on the no DQ. Well, they have to because they don't have their own. (laughs) Now... I'm going to give the idea of the century how to get somebody over. You have Samoa Joe berating the wife, have him saying, and who comes to make the save? Like I said, why not make a walk with Elias? Ah, oh, that, you know, they got the players, man. Now, if you put this kid, Elias, and he comes and delivers a right hand to Samoa Joe, knocks him down, and he says it to her, now you can come walk with Elias and she walks off with him. Yep. Now you develop like a little, you know, click. Ambrose is out. Ambrose comes back. And if this keeps up, there's no promises. They're kind of chummy. Macho Elizabeth kind of deal. Because he does have that macho man deal on him, right? Yep. He does have that little persona. And she's a nice looking lady. You know what I mean? She does have a little sex appeal to her. She's, you know, she carries herself well. Let's just say Ambrose can't come back as a jealous husband like Brian Pillman or one of those crazy nut jobs and come back and look at the clean house. Yeah. And Vito, people, pro- not everybody. I know there's a lot of fans out there that like when we talk about this, you know, fantasy, you know, writing. But there is wrestling going to where most of the fan base, the niche, they don't care about sports entertainment anymore. And all they want are 20 minute matches with yeah. 20 super kicks like I I like some matches like that, but not I, I to me those used to be special and and, and even what you know we're going to go back to Steamboat and Savage and I know they had even better matches at house shows leading up to WrestleMania three, but to me the twenty minute matches aren't even like that. That was a masterpiece. Today's matches are a bunch of false finishes. So yeah, but guys, it, what about you saying all this right? You're saying you like these matches, but when you lead off Raw with a 25-minute match... No, I don't. I'm saying I don't like those matches. I'm, okay. People do. We're, we're, people, how could you like a 25-minute match? It's boring. You just saw a, a, a promo. Back in the day, guys, 1991, when you're doing TVs, what was the longest match you used to see on TV? 10-minute tops. I did yeah. the first Monday Night Raws. I was lucky. I had seven minutes. <laughs> for, That's a long time a, back then. But I was a no I was a nobody. I was a, I was a young Skovon crush. I was wrestling Typhoon. I was wrestling against high energy. I was wrestling on Monday Night Raws. Okay, well, I was wrestling against the Tonka in a singles match. Hey, you got six minutes. You got seven minutes. That's a long time. <laughs> when you get somebody 25 minutes on this show, 
and you open in the show with a long man. Yeah. Nobody wants to see it. Now you and it doesn't up- feel special, Vito. Remember the nope. days where you'd you'd have short matches on Raw and and Nitro, and it was the pay per views you'd get well, the longer matches yeah, exactly. where they felt special. You're completely right, Virtue. It used to be where you would pay to see the longer matches after several weeks of actually building storylines and developing characters on the television shows, and then on the pay per views. That's when you get the longer matches. I definitely prefer that format better than what they're doing this now. This is for you, Vince Russo. He would say this. Today, they do those long matches because they don't know how to fill three uh, hours. They gotta, and yeah. then two more the night after. They, they don't. They don't. Vignettes, 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 character development. They don't have it anymore. Yeah. yeah, like I was All watching right. back the. I just Go wanted ahead. to add, like I was watching back on some of the Attitude Era Raws, and you'd have like D'Lo Brown going out shopping with PMS and little skits like that that would develop the characters. I I miss that stuff. We need more of that. I feel. Did yeah, you see any of the Mama Luke stuff on uh, WCW? By the way. Yeah, well, I remember. Uh, I remember Disco Inferno got himself into some trouble with uh, Tony <laughs> Marinara. <laughs> That, and that, that was probably a shoot, wasn't it? But did you <laughs> you see uh, Johnny and Vito at, at the club with Mean Gene picking up chicks? You, you missed I'm, that one. I'm gonna have to go back and, and watch that one. I mean, some of yeah, that it's stuff. It's 9.99 if here. you want to go watch it. I'm just telling you. But you yeah. know, Vito, I feel it, man. I feel it right now. I'm looking at the clock, and I know this is gonna take a good chunk of a, seg- a segment. We're gonna do a new segment. Um, I don't know if we'll do it every week, but we're gonna start today. And it's not Virtue's Rage, but this week I'm choosing you, Big Vito LaGrasso, Vito's Rage. And this is the main event. I want you, and and maybe it's something we've talked about and you just want to elaborate on it more. There's got to be something that you're just raging inside about in wrestling that they're doing totally wrong or maybe they're doing totally right. Go ahead, my man. Warm up. I have two things today. Two things today that I want to talk about, Okay. My rage number one is, where the hell was the Ballot Club one year ago? They let Gallows and Anderson go to be a comedy act instead of being a dominant force. When they had AJ Styles with them, they were the team. They were the shield. They were something you wanted to watch. They put Finn Balor with these guys. And Finn Balor, yeah. I couldn't wait to get my boys with me. Like you got no, like you're just happy to be there. Go back to the Indies, go back to your bingo holes, go back to Ring of Honor. You do nothing for me. Now you're bringing this together. It's obsolete. You're too late, WWE. Why did you put it? Because the shield is hurt. You need another three-man group. This is a year too late. Secondly, what we talked about today, the creativity of the characters and longevity of heels and baby faces. We do not have character development and we don't have anybody to define heels and baby faces and storylines. Everything is hot shot. That is my very, the thing that gets me crazy. And we just said it on this show, Elias. You want to liven him up? Let him take on for Ambrose's wife. Let him knock out Samoa Joe. Now you just made him a king baby face. Put him in the title run, maybe to go run against Reigns, maybe with uh, the announcer chick there. Say, no, you can't do that. No, babe, I got this. And now you got a little storyline. Enzo, you got with Nia Jack, great going. Alexa Bliss, go sleep with Enzo. Now you got chicken soup. Now you got Nia Jack coming back as a raging, raging lunatic, possibly pregnant. The miscarriage, all the friggin' drama that goes along. She'll be on Facebook, on Twitter, who knows? We need this kind of stuff, real life situations, so we can believe. Right now, we do not believe. Case in point, Jason Jordan is not Kurt Angle's son. I don't care how you look at it, what you do, yeah. it's not believable. Now, Bring- you know, what hurts a story like that? Like, you know, is it because of the internet? Like, in the early 90s and late 80s, we could believe it because a lot of people wouldn't know. Like, the. The smartened fans, is an angle like that not work because of the smartened up fans? Guys, the one thing we're missing in wrestling today, everybody out there, listen to this. It's one word, kayfabe. Yes. Yep. There's no Aaron, kayfabe no more. I, th- I, saw, I saw Aaron shaking his head when you were talking about it's too late for the Balor Club. Now let's remember, uh, AJ Styles and Finn 
did this. And I don't know if Vin, Vince McMahon was happy about that. Now, AJ became the WWE champion. All is well in AJ world. But Finn, to me, he's been demoted since then. And they put the pranksters of Gallows and Anderson with him. Aaron, do you think it's good or too late? I saw you shaking um, your head. Well, Maybe I was I mean, misreading it's you. It's better than nothing, I suppose. But I think back to like when Anderson and Gallows first debuted. And I think WWE missed the boat on those guys right from the get-go. Because when they debuted on the Raw, it was in Los Angeles at the Staples Center. I remember it. They felt like they were outsiders. I think WWE could have done some sort of invasion angle with those guys and, and given them some real credibility as outsiders. But instead, within a couple weeks, they're just guys on the roster. So I felt like something could have been done with them as, as like a Hall and Nash type group right off the bat. And I feel the boat was missed on that. That's just my take on it. Now, at least it's something for them to do, which is better than nothing. I mean, Jexy, your thoughts? Yeah, it's better than nothing. Um, sometimes I wonder if WWE does stuff in spite, of, in spite of themselves because you had the actual Bullet Club that was so popular and it's all over the place that they're, oh, we're not going to do it because we don't want to copy or, you know, something along the lines of that, um, as silly as it may seem, but they, we've seen them do stuff like that before. I don't think it's necessarily bad to be doing it now only because it gives Balor and both of, you know, the Anderson something to do. It gives them a chance to create new feuds. And maybe if we do end up seeing a shield kind of like uh, rivalry. Persona. 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 I was going to yeah. say, you, so you, the Jaxi, I'm supposed people in the comments that I need to disagree with you more. And I'm, I'm, so you're saying the Balor Club, the Bullet Club, Balor Club, whatever you want to call it. You're putting them in a potential shield type? No, no, I don't see it. The shield was so electric when they first came out, you know, when they debuted. And, you know, again, I don't know if the, you know, CM Punk had a lot to do with getting that together or not. I, there's not nowhere even close. Go, elaborate for me. Elaborate how you see, you can see the Balor Club at the shield level. I can't. Before, before you go. Finn, you Finn does it. I wanna, not everybody I mean, does this anymore. When, no. I, when you watch it, it looks like it's only 20% of the crowd. Now, before you go, Jexy, I'm going to remind you of something. When they had a chance to really be superstars <sighs> and really be dominant, Gallows and Anderson, who did they take out to elevate themselves to really be the Mac Daddies of the tag team division? Tell me. Who did they take out? The Dudley Boys. They retired the Dudley Boys. I don't even remember so, that. <laughs> yeah, it was so a while ago. They, good memory, you know. Yeah, my head works every now and then. <laughs> so when it comes to being in that in that faction, when you're going to make your way, that was the height of them where they could have said, oh, we're going to hold these titles for a year and we're going to be the best tag team in the division. They beat the Dudley Boys. The Dudley Boys are the be we're the best. They dropped it and made them comedy. Now go ahead with your... I'm just clearing up some scrambled eggs here. Go ahead. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, and Virtue, when I say that, I don't mean that they're going to be the same level yeah. as The Shield as far as what they did. But if you were to make a spinoff of them to have that group to go out and do what they're doing, Finn has been singles. Roman was singles. You have your tag team. You have a new stable that they can go out and work with more people. If that makes sense, the well, way they that have like, I, they have chemistry together, which is, I think, the best thing they have going for them. The three of them together might be able to connect with the audience as a, as a popular babyface act. I mean, time will tell on that. I see it as a comedy act, though. Like to me, Finn walking out to the ring. I, I think it's a and fresh not, and, start. And, I think it's a fresh a start for Anderson and Gallows. I think it's a fresh jacket, start for them. You know, them as babyfaces now. Yeah, I think Balor needs some sort of makeover. I, I totally agree with you on the Finn jacket. Finn Balor, thing. as is, is absolutely awful. He's too candy ass. He's a Rudy Crew candy ass. The seventh ass. grade or the, the yeah. fifth grade class photo smile has got to go. Yeah, he needs well, more I, of an edge. He needs more I, of an edge. You know, the abs. I, are I not guess if you're catering to kids and females and want a Roman Reign, okay, whatever. I get that, Jaxie, but. I don't know. I want my first of all, Bal. You know, we've th there's been these Balor versus Lesnar talk fans out there that want to see that. No, no. Unless you make Balor this demon, the sadistic demon, where you know, not Papa Shango like, but you almost need to put Balor there to even consider having him in the same ring as Lesnar. 
Go ahead. Who wants to talk about that? Now we're talking Finn Balor and Lesnar and why it hasn't happened. Let's go. Let's well, do this. Thank you, Vito. Head. Your rage is carried I, on, I, man. I, I, you I did it. Oh. I'm telling guys, you want to talk about putting people in perspective? Let's talk about it, okay? The yeah. Shield was elite. We will remember the Shield forever. Who is the next group of guys who came out that was elite? The Nexus. If you guys remember Nexus. Now, yeah, so do you guys they were remember before another the Shield, great, but I they, but I agree. Yep. Another great group, the Spirit Squad. Three groups that were legendary. Three groups that were kick ass. Time out. Could, Expl- explain the Spirit Squad with putting all right. Well, Nexus when they first came out. I mean, I, I get where you're going. Explain putting the Spirit Squad in that early Nexus days and the early Shield Spirit days. Squad was entertaining, but they were a comedy act. But I want to hear now, Vito's take on this. Guys, those guys were in every main event for over a year. They were the most over-dominant group for over first year. Them guys made bank. They were in every pay-per-view. They were on every main event. They had an entrance. They were, were you good. there still with their, them during that they push? Were were you? They were Vince's no. Miztourage. Oh, that was afterwards? Okay. They were Vince's Miztourage, basically. That's why they were on every pay-per-view. But you got to remember, Shane was there. All the other guys were there. You're talking about they played with the main players. They played with Shawn Michaels. They played with Triple H. And then you know who were the Spirit Squad? Ziggler. But it doesn't matter. And they had their TV run. And you know what it reminds me of, Vito? Um, the Mean Street Posse's run. And the yeah. Attitude Era. That, that's, I'll give you that. I can see the Spirit Squad having a run like the Mean Street Posse did. You know, right. I mean, I'm not going to put him in that early Nexus and early Shield. Get it? But I, I, okay, I'm coming around to it now. But you see where I'm building to. So, like when you said you <laughs> want to put the the the, the Bala Club in that group, they're too, they're too, like you know, hey, we're here, we're happy, we got a smile on our face. No, you missed that vote. They're putting them together because, like Jess said, they got nothing for them to do. They're replacing the Shield. It's not going to get the pop. Who are they going to go against? Who are they going to beat up? They're saying nerd, and they're freaking smiling, and they're goofs. <laughs> and, hey, when was the last time we saw Demon? Did he come out against AJ as a demon? Did he? I don't think so. I, 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 I well, Yeah, because the whole Sister Abigail thing didn't happen. So, like, when are we going to see the demon again? And could you imagine if we see the demon, what are the other two guys going to be like demons? Or are they going to go, nerd? I, I just, it's, no, it's the timing no, no. of it sucks. If WWE uses that, I'm, I, you're fired. <laughs> They're hurting you on this show. Oh, but I, I'm, I'm pointing out a bad idea. <laughs> it was, that is a bad idea. I hope they don't use <laughs> well, it maybe, because that maybe would be it'll terrible. Up, maybe it'll end up being the worst storyline of the year, just like um, uh, Jason Jordan as Kurt Angle's son was, which was voted um, the NoDQ.com worst storyline of the year by the fans. I wanted to ask you guys real quick before we wrap this up. Um, you know, there was some controversy this week about the year-end awards. Um Roman Uh-oh. Reigns was voted by the fans. Oh, you know where this is going, Virtue. Uh, Roman Reigns was voted as the worst superstar of the year by the fans at ODQ.com for the second year in a row. A lot of Roman Reigns fans were very unhappy about this. Um, I wanted to get your guys' opinions on this. Um, Jexy, how about you? Your thoughts on Roman Reigns being voted the worst superstar of the year? <laughs> Lost for words. <laughs> It's like he's not. I mean, bottom line is he's not the worst superstar. Why do you think fans voted? Do you think they were trolling or do you think what do you think their reasoning is? Some of that has to be it. It's just the people. It's like when you go to the arena and people boo him just to boo him because they don't like him. Because he's not Finn Balor in their eyes. That's why. That's why they did that vote. Now, what do you think, Vito, about Roman Reigns? uh, Do you think it's justified? Why do you think the fans voted for him as the worst superstar over like Jason Jordan or um, Jinder Mahal? Because he has that Cena effect on people. Yep. And he's shoved down everybody's throat every week, good or bad. And that's what he has. He has this Cena effect. He just shows up and he just get a rumbling. You get out of your seat, you move your seat around, you stand up, you sit down, you crumple up paper, you throw your drink down. He's got the Cena effect. Now, I didn't even know you guys voted on this stuff, but I didn't happen to hear anything about, you know, Rookie Podcaster of the Year Award that went thrown around that, you know, I, my name was thrown around. I didn't hear a winner yet. I was just wondering if you guys came up with an award or anything. Well, if we did, it would definitely be you, no doubt about it. Erroneous. I like how you Erroneous. 
Erroneous. You use the word. You've been reading Virtue's Rage all of 2017 in my columns when I did. And I do have to do a new State of the Roman Empire column because, again, Aaron, this is my takeaway on this. Um, I've used that term Cena effect before with Roman Reigns, Vito. And I am glad to be on NoDQ.com and be the guy that accepts Roman Reigns. Is he forced? Yes. I found that happy medium where I can accept it and I can see the good and the great in a Roman Reigns. So when I see, you know, you have your no DQ fans that vote Roman in those categories and he gets three Razzies or whatever you want to call them. Then I see the the, the backlash and, and Roman fans saying, you're a troll site, this and that. These fans that are on Roman side, do they know that Virtue on NoDQ.com is the big Roman supporter on this website? And so they need to know that, and I am tickled to death that they were defending Roman Reigns against the people that do not like him, and that proves my point all along to everybody, even the rival websites like on LOP, and you know who I'm talking about. Roman Reigns deserves to be where he's at. He's a superstar. He's a, a media magnet. Everybody responds to him. Whether you, you're the, you know, if people hated Roman, right, Vito, right, Jexy? Yeah. When he came out, they'd sit on their hands. They'd go to the bathroom. There'd be more empty seats in the arena. Just because ratings are down during the Roman era, it's the WWE created product as a whole. The fact that you can watch clips on YouTube. You don't need to tune in to, to um, Raw and SmackDown. You can go on the WWE Network and things. it's the social media era. Now, can ratings still go up with better creative? Yes, but it's yeah. not a Roman Reigns fault. Anybody want to take that before we close it? It's not Roman's fault. It's not. If anything, he's holding it over 2.5. If Roman wasn't the top guy and you put Samoa Joe up there, sorry, Joe, or Finn Balor, they'd go to 2 million viewers. Sorry, that's my thoughts. Oh, Roman's I holding think, it where think, it is. I don't think it would be that drastic. <laughs> Absolutely, because that niche fan base is that. How many WWE Network subscribers are there? 1.5, 2 million? That's the niche fan base, Aaron. Yeah, you I, take Roman I, I out of the that. equation, that's where the numbers go. I, that's just my opinion. I don't think they would drop that far. They might drop a little bit. Roman might be keeping things up a little bit, but I, I don't see it as that much. I don't think he's Put a decibel much. reader in the arena. I think, I, think if, I, think, I think there's a number of guys that if they were given Roman's opportunity in his spot, they would do just as well. Just my take on it, though. Who? Who? I'm yeah. putting you on the spot. Joe. Joe. I like Joe more than Joe, you guys are giving him credit way. for. You do what Roman does. Jexy? Pete Dunn, guys. The answer to there everything it is. is Pete Dunn. Pete Dunn. I think I might be taller than Pete Dunn. That's that's oh, the only people are gonna Pete love Dunn. that, Jexy. You you just pop I, really? I, I love Pete just, Dunn. Oh, Pete Dunn is Pete great, Dunn. but I think I'm taller than the guy, and that's saying something. Hey, really? You got a free T-shirt? You got <laughs> what? You pu you're pushing his merch? It might Come be on. A, it might be a signed Pete Dunn T-shirt. You can't. Hey, you kill him. Position. Oh, I don't Lord. think I, Joe, I don't think Joe can control a crowd like Roman. I mean, the night after WrestleMania last year, Do Roman you hear the did people? that. Every time Joe go, comes out there, the crowd's going Joe Joe. They are into the guy. I've been to the live events. The crowd is. They've been doing in Joe 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 because that goes to the beat of his song. You are stuck yeah. on these like Rusev Day stuff and Joe Joe Joe. I, it's, it's, I've been to. Yeah, have you been you, to look, WWE show lately? If you. I haven't been into the arena I, to hear the I Rusev Day chants. When I go to the shows, I don't just watch the shows. I like to watch the crowd and see how they react to the Rusev. Aaron, That's just like you, I went, I went to dozens of Attitude Era shows with Austin and The Rock, right? And I've been into you know some of the Heyman SmackDown era. I've never felt the the, the electricity in arena since since then with Ro Roman Reigns is the only guy. Oh, no doubt. Roman Joe, does get yeah, that. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Joe can't reach that electricity in an arena. I'm sorry. Rusev Day can't. Daniel Bryan might have been close. Rome, again, it's the Cena effect because Roman has been shoved down everybody's throats. So now you have, yeah. you know, the group of fans that hate him and the group of fans that love him. And there's that very polarizing factor to him. Uh, Joe, I think it's a slowly turning kind of character. though. You know, they're different I'll tell you characters. one thing. I'll tell you one thing. He did get a lot better on how he carries himself. He did overcome a lot of obstacles because at when he was shoved down everybody's throat, he was green. He wasn't a very good wrestler. He has worked to become a quality worker and a main event guy. You got to give him that. The response yep. he gets is the Cena effect because that's how he was brought up, the same way as, uh, as Cena, the same way as Batista. 
guys, when I was there, when uh, Cena and Batista would go match after match, and you know, every, you know, and um, I would, you would listen to the re- to the uh, reaction of Cena, you really rea- listen to the reaction of Batista. Batista blew his doors off. Oh, and, and uh, Virtue, you know, you were mentioning guys putting me on the spot. Strowman, you know, how can we forget Braun Strowman? They could strap the rocket to that guy. He can be the top guy to carry the company. <laughs> He'd be one guy I would be accepting of of that because everybody knows I'm a Strowman and a Roman supporter. So. Okay, when Strowman but, comes out there, you know, people are in awe. When I look at the crowd, when I go to WWE events, when Strowman comes out, people are in legitimate awe at his presence. I mean, that guy is, is the real deal. I mean, he is a freak of nature. And I'm glad you brought that up because who had the program with Strowman that got him up to that next level this year? Roman Reigns. All right, people are going to bash me for talking well, no, about Roman that's so much. Roman, Roman Reigns fans were actually citing that, saying, how can Roman be the worst wrestler, you know, the worst superstar? I changed the name of the award, by the way, because, you know, I don't think worst wrestler is proper in that case. I think yeah. superstar is the whole package or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, people were citing that um, – Roman Reigns helped put Braun Strowman on the map, and, and that's why you, you cannot vote for him as the worst superstar. Now, can I say something that you guys would probably hate me for? We won't hate but, you. Go we for it. You. You're still you. raging, I'm gonna remember? Say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, say this, and I'm going to say this with all due respect, and this is not about knocking anybody. Okay. As far as Braun Strowman goes, WWE has ruined his persona. When you make the man who's supposed to be the most feared guy in a company dress up as an elf at I agree. Time I agree. And make and make him look like a complete idiot. And then you had the Karen Angle thing where he got down on his knees and was begging for forgiveness. And that was exposed on social media because the word kayfabe did not exist. You exposed him as a weak link. So now you look at him as a clown and he's not really accepted. The garbage can thing made him look tremendous. The, the, him chasing guys, I, like I told you, you shouldn't have to chase guys. You should just beat up guys. Yep. Him being in there with Brock and he blew up at that finish. That wasn't the finish. He blew up in experience. Him being in there with Kane, the big show. You're talking monster against monster. Having him walk around New York City in an elf friggin' clown's outfit looking like a, a complete idiot. Now, when you're Vito, a monster. I, I agree. That was dumb. If they would have ended that, they went to black, right? And you heard him banging through a bunch of stuff. If they would have actually showed him get mad that he was out there doing that and then maybe rip the stuff off and then all of a sudden he came back in his brawn gimmick and beat people up and threw. You know, yeah, that that would have been Heath okay. Slater is for. You have Heath Slater do that, not Braun Strowman. But guys, but guys, if you're developing a monster, they never did that with Brock Lesnar. They never did that with Batista. They never did that with any of the other great guys who were big, strong heels. Well, but Mick Foley played Santa Claus, but he was a fun-loving guy, though. I know. Okay. Okay. Comedy. Guys, I was on there as one of the Santa Clauses in 2006 or seven when I was there with the Boogeyman, if you remember. You were. (laughs) I was one of the most famous Santa Claus in WWE history. And what did I do? I ate the most worms in WWE history. <laughs> I was there with Nunzio. And I'll give a topper, right? They say, all right, here we go. Well, you're going to be Santa Claus. I was like, all right. So you're going to have to eat worms. Nunzio goes, am I going to have to eat worms? No, no, shut up, all right? What are you doing? I'm going to eat the worms, all right? Because last time you had to do it, you spit them out. So what did I do? I said, listen, Boogie. I want you to take as many worms as you can and shove them in my mouth, and I'm going to hold it, okay? So he was very green, and he was very raw. I said, you stick your finish. You do your thing. I want you to look strong. He stuck his finish. He was nervous, right? He p- took the worms, put it in my mouth. I held it there for how to be two minutes, mouthful of worms, right? <laughs> Greatest spot, Christmas spot ever. It wasn't that I wasn't an aggressive guy or I wasn't a top heel or my position on the card was to be a good wrestler, to get guys over. I knew where my position was. We were with the FBI, but we did some comedy stuff, right? Yeah. We were a good tag team. But my job was to get that kid over. My job was to get Bobby Lashley over. My job was to get other guys over. That was my job. So when they gave me that extra spotlight before the dress, what did I do? I ran with it. And if you look on the fo- famous... Uh, a boogeyman, big veto episode of Raw of Santa Clauses. That was acceptable because that's what I did. You made me yeah. the fool. Okay, Braun Strowman 
is a potential multi-millionaire Bronco Buster superstar waiting to bust down. But as soon as they made him do that, that took away his mystique of him being a monster. Well, pretty soon, Vito, if they keep giving him elf gimmicks, he will be doing the Bronco Buster as a move. That you know, oh that's great, great insight, great insight, and I know we're reaching our time. Agreement. We all, I think, we all yeah. agree with you on that. And uh, we'll be back next week, but it's time for plugs. All except you know, those Pete Dunn fans. Yeah, yeah, we should have closed the show on that because we couldn't yeah, top we that. So, Je- Jexy, go ahead with your plugs. Thank you for being on. Oh, go ahead. Lord. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jexy Rocks, and also go over to ProWrestlingTees.com and pick up a No DQ shirt. Support all of us. Virtue's rage, Vito's rage, Aaron's rage. Well, semi rage. And soon, <laughs> one of these shows, Jexy's rage. Ooh. Big Vito, I know you always have a lot to plug. All there right. You go. I did your favor. There you go. My man's wearing a Big Vito Got Color shirt. You can find it at prowrestlingtees.com slash the Big Vito brand. If you need collar and elbow, use the code Big Vito, 10% off. We have we have a signature series shirt on there. I am not a Pete Dunn fan, so I will not wear his shirt. Oh, you can right. find me. You can find. Hey, listen, some people carry it and some people don't. I'm a Ghost Gym fan. You can find that at Ghost Gym. I'm, you know, I'm the Snoop Dogg. <laughs> what are you gonna do? What can we say? Anyway, you can find me on Twitter at the Big Vito Brand. Find me on Facebook at the Big Vito Brand. If you go to my website, people. BigVito.com. We have all the brands. We have all our affiliates. We have everything you need there. We have merchandise. We have jackets for sale. We have everything you need. But the best thing of all is that I'm here with the No DQ crew with the Vince Russo brand on Podcast One, getting color with all the guys. And I'm happy to be part of the team. This is a great crew. Good show, guys. Hey, Vito, tell them about that t-shirt contest. Um, I actually did one if you want to go to my Twitter, but I'm disqualified since I do these videos with Vito. You want to tell them about that? Now, you go ahead and tell them. Give the fans your insight on my creation. Go ahead. So Vito is doing, if you buy or he, you can even make your own, but you know we prefer you buy a big Vito shirt. And then once you have it and you put it on, do a video, do a selfie in an interesting, unique way. If you need an idea, go to my Twitter and check my picture out. But if Vito and his wife, Noel, will pick a winner after what, January? I think it's going all month. After January, and you will be able to do a Skype session with Big Vito LaGrasso. Did I get that right? You got it right. You're going to do a Skype. You know, come. We could do it early in the morning, late at night, as long as your mom ain't watching, your dad ain't watching, go in your basement. I don't care what you want to do. It's live, baby, live. We're going to entertain you, or you can entertain me, whichever you want to do. I really don't care. You have the shirt on, have it off. Do whatever you got. We're in, we're in no discrimination group here. We all like to have a good time. I'm just not a Pete Dunn fan. You got it? <laughs> send all your hate mail to uh, Big Vito Brands. Go ahead on Twitter and send him a message. If you're not a, if, if you are a Pete Dunn fan and you have a problem with him, you can go confront him over on Twitter. And, of course, uh, go over to ProWrestlingTees.com and uh, – Use the code SAVE5 to get a discount on the No DQ shirts. Check out Big Vito's merch. And stay tuned this weekend, the return of Wrestling Trivia Challenge. And Vito, maybe we can get you on to face the champ, whoever the All champ right. is. All right. Hey, listen, bring it on. I'll do it. Just let me know. I'll come on, and we'll see who's see what I got. All right. So there you have it, folks. And Virtue, go ahead. You can follow me on Twitter at No DQ. Blah, 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 blah. At No DQ underscore Virtue. But... What I wanted to really say is January 14th. This is going to be better than Russell Kingdom. If you're in, if you live near Cleveland, Ohio, UXWA presents Too Legit to Quit and Virtue. Yours truly will be there, and I will be ringside for we a match. Should so, be there. No, we we book people that are going to be there, and maybe one maybe one day we'll have Big Vito there. But it's UXWA Too Legit to Quit, and it's January 14th. The flyer will be on my Twitter and on my Facebook. So with that said, No DQ Galaxy, this was the No DQ Review, and we will be back.